Chapter 1 Observing the Armies on the Battlefield of Kurukshetra O oh, Sanjay, what is happening with my sons and the sons of Pandu since they assembled at Kurukshetra for battle? Maharaj, after looking over the Pandavas military formation, your son approached Dronacharya and began to speak. Acharya, behold the vast Pandava army so expertly arranged by your intelligent disciple, the son of Drupad. In this army are many heroic bowmen equal to Bhima and Arjun. Great fighters like Yuyudhan, Virat and Drupad. There are also powerful fighters like Drishtaketu, Chekitan, Kashiraj, Purujit, Kuntibhod and Shaibya. Look, there is Yudhamanyu the powerful Uttamauja, the son of Subhadra, and the sons of Draupadi. All these warriors are powerful chariot fighters. But for your information, O best of the Brahmanas, let me tell you about the warriors who are specially qualified to lead my armies. They are personalities like your good self, Bhishma, Karna, Kripa, Ashwatthama, Vikarna and Bhurishrava. They are always victorious in battle. And there are many other heroes who are prepared to lay down their lives for my sake. All of them are well equipped with many weapons and all are experienced in military science. Our strength is immeasurable. We are perfectly protected by Grandfather Bhishma. But the strength of the Pandavas is limited. Everyone must now give full support to Bhishma while standing at our strategic points of entrance into the phalanx of the army. Sanjaya speaks. Then Bhishma blew his conch shell very loudly like a roaring lion, which gave Dhyodhan joy. Bhishma was thinking. Victory or defeat is in the Lord's hands but I'll do my duty as a Kshatriya and give my life. And now that I've blown my conch shell, Krishna will respond by blowing his conch shell, which I long to hear. After that, the conch shells, drums, bugles, trumpets and horns all suddenly sounded and the combined sound was tumultuous. Both Krishna and Arjun, stationed on a great chariot drawn by white horses, sounded their transcendental conch shells. Krishna blew his conch shell, called Kanchanjanya. Arjuna blew his, the Devadatta. And Bhima blew his terrific conch shell, called Pandra. King Yudhisthira blew his conch shell, the Ananta Vijay. Nakul and Sahadev blew the Sukosha and Mani Pushpaka. That great archer, the king of Kasi, the great fighter Sikandi, Drishtadumna, Virat, the unconquerable Satyaki, Drupa, the sons of Draupadi, and the others all blew their respective conch shells. The blowing of these conch shells became uproarious, vibrating both in the sky and on the earth. It shattered the hearts of your sons. At that time, Arjun, seated in the chariot, bearing the flag marked with Hanuman, took up his bow and prepared to shoot his arrows. After looking at your sons drawn in military array, Arjun then spoke to Krishna. O oh Krishna, please bring my chariot between the two armies, so that I may see those present here with whom I must contend in this great battle. 
Krishna replied jokingly, Why, you'll simply see friends and make friends, Arjun. No, Krishna, I want to see those who have come here to fight, wishing to please that evil-minded son of Jitarashtra. Sanjaya speaks, Hey, Rajan, having been addressed by Arjun, Krishna drew up their chariot in the midst of both armies. In the presence of all the great warriors of the world and directly facing Bhishma and Drona, Krishna said, Just behold, part, all the Kurus assembled here. There, Arjun could see within the midst of the armies, his fathers, grandfathers, teachers, uncles, brothers, sons, grandsons, and friends. When Arjun saw all these different friends and relatives, he became overwhelmed with compassion. Oh Krishna, seeing my friends and relatives present before me in such a fighting spirit, I feel my body quivering. My mouth is drying up. My hair is standing on end. My Gandiva bow is slipping from my hand and my skin is burning. I am unable to stand here any longer. My mind is reeling, Krishna. I see only causes of disaster in this war. But you'll get a kingdom, Arjun. I do not want a kingdom. Nor can I see how any good can come from killing my own kinsmen in this battle. Hey, Govinda. Why should I think of getting a kingdom? What is the use of a kingdom, happiness, or even life itself in the absence of those we want to enjoy them with? Oh, Madhusudan, when my grandfather, teachers, and other relatives are ready to give up their lives and are standing before me, why should I wish to kill them even though they might kill me? So do not kill your elders, Partha, but at least kill the sons of Dhritarashtra. No! What happiness will I get from that? I might enjoy the kingdom for a short time, but I'll suffer so long for having killed them. Sin will overcome me if I slay my relatives. I'll not get happiness. But they are aggressors, Arjun. There's no sin for killing aggressors. Certainly there is sin, Krishna. Why are you so sure, Arjun, when Shastra says the opposite? Artha Shastra says there is no sin, Krishna, but Dharma Shastra is higher. And Dharma Shastra says that there is sin from killing aggressors. You do not know the truth, Arjun. I know the results that will come, Krishna, especially for the destruction of the dynasty. Oh, Krishna, why shouldn't we refrain from fighting? Why aren't Bhishma and Drona refraining, Arjun? They also know these things. Their hearts are overtaken by greed, Krishna. But we know. Why should we act like them? A Kshatriya's duty is to fight when challenged, Arjun. Yes, Vasudev, but I see the imminent result of family destruction. With the destruction of dynasty, the family tradition is lost, and the rest of the family becomes irreligious. When irreligion is prominent in the family, the women of the family become polluted, and from the degradation of womanhood comes unwanted progeny. O oh, Krishna, I have heard from authorities that those who destroy family traditions go to hell. How strange it is that we are preparing to commit such great sins, driven by the desire to enjoy royal happiness. I deserve to be killed unarmed on the battlefield for even considering killing my own kinsmen. Sanjaya speaks. Then Arjun cast aside his bow and arrows and sat down on the chariot, overwhelmed with grief. Seeing Arjun full of compassion, depressed and crying, 
Krishna began to speak. 